Have you ever seen some of those um, interesting hand positions that are used in Kung Fu and Qigong? Maybe some like this, or this, or this, or this. Lots and lots of different unusual hand positions. Wondered what they're for? Maybe it's just because they look cool? Well, that's what we're going to talk about in this episode of Chi Life. So before I get on to the topic of the hand positions, maybe, just maybe, you can recognize this place I'm in today, this, uh, this scenery, these trees behind me. It is where part of Forrest Gump was filmed, where he was running up between the trees. Pretty iconic space. Beautiful, beautiful place with these beautiful, beautiful trees too. Really lovely energy amongst the trees. Um, so yes, I'm in Savannah, Georgia today. But on with the topic. I think sometimes people, when they see the different hand positions in Qigong and Kung Fu, they think it's just, a, I, I guess, part of the culture, part of the symbolism um, associated with the exercises and the movements. You know, maybe something that just makes things look cool or part of invoking, because sometimes, you know, well, quite often, different exercises, different movements, are associated with different animals and maybe part of invoking the energy of the animal and that's certainly partly true that's definitely part of it but another part of this is um, these different hand positions really have very clear distinct sometimes subtle but clear effects on our and influences on our energy and on our body so I'm going to look at just a few of these um, in this video uh, to, to give you some examples of how these work, why we use these different hand shapes um, in both Kung Fu and in Qigong. And um, yeah, by no means exhaustive because there are tons and tons and tons of different hand shapes that are used for different things. Qigong, Kung Fu are such diverse um, arts. There's so many different parts to them, which is you know truly wonderful. I think that there's such diversity. But by looking at a few of these, it'll give you a bit of an insight as to yeah some of the different ways that the hands are used, and um, and, and that'll give you an appreciation for them for one thing, because sometimes you know people will not focus on those sorts of things, so they think it doesn't matter, so they'll do it another way. Um, and of course you can adapt exercises, of course you can, but to give an appreciation for when different hand shapes are in an exercise of that there might be a really specific purpose for them, um, and also to help you to understand, well certainly these hand shapes, and as part of that might help you to dig in and understand other ones that you encounter as well. Excuse the slightly unusual camera angle, I managed to forget uh, to bring my little little portable tripod thing along with me so I'm just making my best of uh, propping the camera aka my phone um, up against something um, to, to take the shot so you should be able to see what you need to anyway so um, the reason why I'm doing this video well one obviously I th hopefully it'll be interesting and useful to some people but um, I guess it was inspired by uh, a student asking a question about a specific hand shape and then also saying hey why don't you make a video with some more details about the hand shapes so I'll look at a few of these um, I, from memory the hand shape that they specifically asked about was why we claw in one of the exercises that is in the 12 rivers um, set of uh, Qigong um, at Long Wai Kha Qigong. So the 12 rivers are for the organ meridians, one exercise for each um, organ and meridian. So the exercise in question was called Tiger Stretches Its Back and in this movement we reach to the side where I'm in a lunge here, not that you can see that, and pull my body over like this and as I do this I claw. So my hands go out open, I then turn and claw like I'm grabbing something and bring my arms over. Now when we claw, even if we claw gently, um, we, you know, we can vary how much tension we put into the claw. Even with a gentle claw, let alone a stronger claw, what this does is it introduces tension through the body. Now some people have this weird idea that they think tension, tension is bad, all tension is bad. Of course it's not. It's about a balance and a harmony between yin and yang. If you had no tension in your body, 
you would be a puddle on the ground. Um, we need tension, but we need it in the right way and, and the right balance and to, to use it in ways that are useful for us. In this instance, introducing some tension helps us. It actually works with the character of the energy, but it also helps with where we direct the energy in our body. So, for example, with this movement, as people do this movement, if they don't have any tension in their hands, which then transfers down into the arms and the rest of the body, what they often do is they do this. So they reach up and over and then as their arms continue to move, they tend to wave their arms rather than move their body. And again, you can't really see, I'm in a lunge here, but that's part of the exercise. If you want more about this specific, specific exercise, um, you can look for it on the Long Wake Tai Gong website. But yeah, so they tend to just let their arms move over. By introducing tension, what happens, instead of just the arms going, the whole shoulders moves over, and as part of this, this also moves the rib cage over. And this is part of what helps to massage and stimulate down the gallbladder meridian, which runs down the side of the body, so we get a stronger stimulation down through the gallbladder meridian. And it's also what, part of what helps to physically massage the gallbladder itself, which sits underneath the rib cage, um, underneath the liver and underneath the ribs over here. So if you just do this and don't really move the body, you don't really get this motion side to side, because of course we go to the other side as well, which loosens and massages and stimulates that space where the gallbladder sits. So, one interesting example, that same principle is used elsewhere with the claw as well in different exercises where by introducing the, the clawing shape, it sends a tension which affects the way energy moves through the rest of the body. Actually, I'll talk a little bit about the character of energy in relationship to this exercise as well. So the gallbladder is part of the wood element, one of the um, key aspects of the wood element or because this is the liver and the gallbladder is about regulation of energy supply so um, when we need to send energy out so the liver stores glycogen which it then puts out into the body when it needs needs to we have a surge of energy to use that energy we actually need a certain amount of bracing through the body in order to direct it effectively if we're just floppy the energy gets stuck and it doesn't it doesn't go in the direction we want it to perhaps it dissipates so in this exercise, we're learning to have healthy wood. Healthy wood has strength, but is also flexible. So it, healthy wood is not floppy. Healthy wood is springy, so strong but flexible. So having the claws helps us to be flexible, but also have that strength at the same time, as opposed to be floppy, or also as opposed to just being rigid and not being able to move. So moving on to some other hand shapes that you might see. Um, another one that will come up from time to time is this shape. It's a crane's beak or head. This is the beak, this is the head. Kind of like a bird, I guess. Um, and this does a number of different things. Again, part of it is the way that it introduces tension through the body. If you're doing exercises with this, you'll feel a real difference between having the hands open and loose and again this kind of tension is going to send stimulation to specific parts of the body but as well as that um, all of the fingertips come together like this this is a kind of chi lock um, energy we all radiate energy all the time there's always energy flowing out of us is people can think that's a mystical thing but of course there is if your body is warm which if you're alive it is you're radiating heat you know that's why if you have a you know a thermal Im imaging camera you can see the heat of something because it's radiating out equally if you have electrical activity in you which if you're alive you definitely do you will have a magnetic field which is sending energy out from your body and there's other aspects of energy that radiate from you as well, this, this should not be controversial. I challenge any scientist credible with a rational, logical mind to try to explain how no energy radiates out from us. Of course, this is obvious. Now, the exact nature of that, people may have different understanding, but you know, we're radiating energy. 
Some surfaces of our body radiate more energy than others. They also take in energy more easily than others. So the palm of your hand, or the, and generally the soft surfaces of your body, tend to um, radiate energy more easily and also take energy in more easily. The hard surfaces of your body tend to be less conductive, right? That's actually probably a good idea to do. I haven't done much. I did that unboxing with my thermal camera a while ago to maybe sh see if I can show some differences between hard and soft surfaces of the body. Obviously, it's just going to show heat, but um, in terms of um, the energy coming out, that might be interesting to play with. But anyway, soft surfaces tend to send out more energy. And in particular, the palms and the hands, because we have lots of nerve endings that run to the hands, we have lots of blood flow to the hands because we use them for fine motor control. We send a lot of energy to our hands naturally. And as well as the palm, specifically, a lot of energy comes out from our fingertips. And this is because the fingertips are a point in the body where soft meets hard. Um, and we find this again, the patterns are throughout nature. Um, where perhaps there's water flowing underground and it, go, and it goes into the valleys, it goes into the soft areas, it naturally flows, and where it hits something hard, this can sometimes cause it to rise and shoot out. And this is where you get things like springs from soft meeting hard and the water comes out. This is the same, soft meets hard, and it, so this is where the, you know, the fleshy part of the finger meets the fingertip and the energy tends to come out, particularly from the fingers. So if you've ever had the experience of someone getting really angry and shaking their finger at you, and, and if you're sensitive, you might have felt like there was something coming out of their finger and like, oh, you could really feel something. That's because when you get angry, actually this ties in with the, the claw and the passion, the liver, and, you know, the, in, the bracing that the body does when, when our energy rises. So someone's really got their energy up and they've braced their body because they're angry and this causes it to shoot out more strongly from their fingertips and so that thing that you thought you were feeling you probably were actually feeling something from it now whether or not we're angry and it's shooting out particularly strongly or not there's a general flow coming out through our fingers sometimes we just want to send that energy out sometimes we want to redirect it so we don't send it out, but we recirculate it in our body. This one, this hand shape, is a really interesting one in that it can be used for both. In Kung Fu, we will use this to concentrate all of that energy into a small spot from all of the fingertips. But in Qi Gong, we may use it instead because all of the fingertips are meeting, they're both good at sending and also receiving we can use this as a way for the energy to flow to the fingertips and then recirculate back into the body in different exercises. Another hand shape that might demonstrate this a little bit better um, would be some fist positions. So if you commonly, you know, a common fist would be just a flat fist like this, can be held vertical, can be held um, horizontal, can be held horizontal the other way, can be held on different angles, but a fist with the thumb outside of the fingers. Now what this does, it does, it does a bunch of things. It creates a concentrated traded, um, section of mass here on the arm, uh, at the end of the arm. Um, and so this can be used for bringing energy out of your body in certain movements because having that mass on the end as you move causes the energy to flow out and be pulled out towards it. A good example maybe to understand this is if you have a piece of string and then just a piece of string and try to swing it around in a circle it kind of, it's very difficult, it kind of flops around, doesn't swing very easily. If you then use the same piece of string but tie a big knot in it at the end and then try to swing it around it will swing smoothly because that knot, that concentrated section of mass is pulling the force out from the center and so sometimes fists are used in this way to pull the energy out. Having the thumb outside again this this pattern of uh, energy coming out through the fingers means that some of that energy that goes out is going to be released and dissipated with the thumb outside. Now in a lot of applications that's not going to matter in fact sometimes it's useful because if we're generating a lot of energy we want there to be essentially like a release valve so that the energy can escape and um, be released outwards 
so we, we don't overload, build too much energy. So sometimes that's totally fine. Other times we're really wanting to focus on building the energy but recirculating it. We don't want it to be lost or radiated out too excessively. And so we make a different kind of fist where we put the thumb inside the fingers. And so all of these parts of our body which send e energy very easily and can take it in as well, but that send it very easily, including the thumb, are now pointing into the palm which can conduct and absorb that energy very easily. So as we send energy out, instead of it being some of it being lost, most of it then is recirculated within the body. Hopefully that's interesting so far. Um, maybe I'll look at one or two more, um, a bit briefly maybe, because I know this video is starting to get a bit long. Um, so let's see. Different pointing finger positions. We can have a pointing finger like this, we can have another one like this. So often these are used to specifically, well they're used in different ways actually. I'm going to have to talk about some more things to explain some of the different ways. But they're used for, for sending a concentrated stream of energy, right? Because if the energy is coming out through the fingers and I make a, whether it be this way or this way, I'm going to concentrate the stream into this shape. Same thing applies for this sort of thing, commonly referred to as sword fingers. I'm sending energy out in a concentrated stream through here. Um, it's also used as a way to concentrate flow within the body sometimes as well. So an example for this is using the palms. So there are different ways to use the palms. Let's see. Yep, you're going to be able to see me. So I might have my palms facing downwards. Okay. So now my connective surfaces are facing down towards the ground. So I'm connecting to the energy of the earth. If I bring my palms up, like this, now my energy is going outwards, my palm is connecting or sending outwards. But as well as this, if you feel the difference in your body, what happens not just in the arm, in the hand, but through the arm, as you do this, this is relatively relaxed. As the palm comes up, this introduces a tension that flows back through the arm from changing the angle of the wrist. And in a way, so we're literally stretching the nerve, a gentle stretch, a healthy stretch, but we're stretching the nerve, which creates stimulation back into the rest of the body. There are times when instead of having the palm this way, we will use the fingers like this, which is known as a dragon's paw. And so what happens is this force that's coming back into the body, when we use the dragon's paw, instead of it being a wide stimulation, it becomes a very narrow stimulation which flows into specific parts of the body. Um, one exercise where we see this is in riding a horse using a bow and arrow to shoot the eagle, where we use this dragon's claw to represent a bow. And we use it specifically to send the energy into the area in the spine where the nerves go to the kidneys and adrenal glands. Okay, well, hopefully that was interesting, hopefully useful. Again, there are other, um, other fists as well. I didn't talk too much about kung fu ones, did I? But I know this video is getting long. One really interesting kung fu one, just briefly, sometimes using different knuckles. This one here, it's called a ginger fist. And so we have a different interesting knuckle shape. Anyway, maybe I'll make another video with more hand shapes or something like that in the future. I guess my purpose in this video um, is, again, there's no way I could possibly be exhaustive in my discussion of these because there's so many of them or certainly not exhaustive in a short vlog video like this but to demonstrate some of the principles and give an appreciation of um, the role and the value of different hand shapes in your practice i hope you found it interesting maybe useful giving you some things to think about in your qigong um, if you've enjoyed this video um, if you think other people would enjoy it too please like comment subscribe share all that sort of thing I am hoping to reach lots of people um, with this channel and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.